For over 20 years, authorities were baffled by two seemingly unrelated John and Jane Doe cases, both sets of remains having been found 200 miles apart in two separate US states. The body of an Asian female was found murdered in amongst debris off Interstate 85 in May of 1998 in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Four months later, in September of 1998, the remains of a young Eurasian boy was found near a billboard in Mabane, Orange County, North Carolina, having been dumped there by his killer. Both cases quickly went cold, until December of 2018, when authorities made a startling connection between both John and Jane Doe. In the months following, the horrifying truth surrounding their deaths would come to light and their killer would finally be unmasked and brought to justice. On the 25th of September 1998, a lawn crew worker working along Interstate 85 in North Carolina, USA, made a grisly discovery. A child's skull buried in amongst tangled brush underneath an Interstate 8540 billboard near to Industrial Drive, Mabane. The child, who was confirmed to be male, was still partially clothed, but severely decomposed. There were no initial signs of trauma at the scene, so authorities concluded that the victim had died elsewhere before being dumped under the billboard. The medical examiner determined that the young boy had died a few months prior to his discovery, his cause of death being strangulation. Initially, authorities believed the boy to be of Hispanic descent, though this was later disproven, and he was actually of European and Asian admixture. Between the ages of 9 and 12 years old, standing between 4 feet 7 and 4 feet 11 inches tall, and weighing between 50 and 80 pounds. The boy, nicknamed Mabane Child, and the boy under the billboard, had dark brown, straight, fine hair, measuring 3 to 4 inches in length, and most likely had brown eyes, but due to the severe stage of decomposition that the boy was found in, this could not be determined. The youngster was found wearing a size 13 pair of khaki fox polo club shorts, a pair of white tube socks, a pair of white briefs, and a fairly new pair of black and white 2XS sport athletic shoes in size 3. When the boy was found, he was not wearing a shirt, and one was never recovered. However, authorities did find $50, two $20 bills and one $10 bill in his short pockets. The boy's dentals showed him to have a slight overbite, and his upper canine teeth were high erupting. Many usually refer to these high erupting canines as so-called fang teeth, which would most likely have been noticeable when the decedent smiled or spoke. Authorities created numerous facial reconstructions over the years of the so-called boy under the billboard. However, no match was found and the case quickly went cold. That was until a break in the case came in December of 2018, when a genetic genealogy consultant, Barbara Ray Venter, carried out breakthrough DNA testing on the boy under the billboard and determined that the child was not of Hispanic origins but was biracial, first generation mix of European and Eastern Asian. Through online DNA ancestry services, Barbara was able to trace a male cousin of the boy's parents, who lived in Hawaii. It was through speaking to this relative and others that authorities were finally able to identify the boy in February of 2019 as 10-year-old Robert Adam Whit, known as Bobby, 
who was born in Michigan before moving to Mount Oreb, Ohio, and then Concord, North Carolina, not quite matching the isotope tests taken at the time, which concluded him to be from southeast of America, possibly Georgia or Alabama. Bobby's relatives were informed on December 26th of 2018 of the heartbreaking news. As it turned out, Bobby's cousin, Natalie Mosteller, who was nine years his senior, had been scouring the internet alongside her sisters, looking for their long-lost cousin for years. But neither of the sisters or any of their family imagined such a heartbreaking outcome to their search. The family, as you can imagine, were extremely distraught after hearing about Bobby's death. However, many, many questions arose, especially regarding the circumstances surrounding his death and the whereabouts of Bobby's mother, who the family hadn't seen for a prolonged period of time. In the late 1990s, the family were told by John Witt, Bobby's father, that his wife and mother of their son, Myung Hua Cho, had turned against him and his family and had left the country with their son as a result, apparently moving to Myung's native South Korea. Because of what John had told them, the family weren't concerned that they hadn't heard from Myung or Bobby in a while, so they didn't file any missing persons reports. They had no idea that Bobby was missing, let alone murdered. One question still sat at the front of their minds, however. Where was Myung? Considering what had happened to Bobby, authorities were fearful that Myung had met a similar fate. It was at this point that further investigations were carried out and local authorities in Orange County searched through various databases in an effort to find an unidentified woman matching Bobby's mother's description. They eventually found a probable match to Bobby's mother, Spartanburg Jane Doe. So the Orange County Sheriff's Office contacted authorities in Spartanburg about a potential connection between both cases. Jane Doe was found naked in a wooded area behind a pile of debris off of Interstate 85 on the 13th of May 1998 in Spartanburg, South Carolina, on the same stretch of highway where Bobby Witt was found four months later. The decedent, who had ligature marks where her hands had been bound, had died hours prior to her discovery, and her cause of death was determined to be respiratory insufficiency. Jane Doe was a female of Asian descent, between the ages of 30 and 45 years old, standing at approximately 5 feet 2 inches tall and weighing between 140 and 150 pounds. She had black curly hair and brown eyes. Also of note, Jane Doe had an ovoid scar on her left forearm and three vaccination marks on her upper left arm. She was also missing nine teeth. Some clothing items that apparently belonged to Jane Doe were found one week later, however this didn't help authorities with identifying her, and like the so-called boy under the billboard, Spartanburg Jane Doe's case quickly went cold. In January of 2019, with the help of South Korean authorities, police were able to identify Spartanburg Jane Doe through fingerprints and DNA as 44-year-old Myung Hua Cho, Bobby Witt's mother. After the pair were identified, 57-year-old John Russell Witt subsequently confessed to murdering his wife and their son. He killed Myung, whom he'd met while serving in the Air Force in Korea, on the 12th of May of 1998, and Bobby, on or around the 29th of July of that same year, dumping their bodies around 200 miles apart along Interstate 85. John had been partaking in an extramarital affair at the time and wanted his wife out of the way, so he killed her. 
Bobby didn't like his father's mistress and the two didn't get along. Therefore, John decided to kill Bobby as well. Witt told his mistress that Myung had moved back to Korea and then sent his son on a plane to be with her. Little did she know that this was far from the dark and twisted truth. On the 13th of May 2019, John Witt was charged with first degree murder and concealing the death of his son by a grand jury in Orange County. John was actually already in prison by this time in Ashland, Kentucky, due to a separate gun charge and robbery charges laid against him in the 1990s, and he isn't eligible for parole until 2037, though it was certain that due to the despicable crimes committed against his wife and son, that his sentence would undoubtedly be extended and the chance of parole would almost certainly be taken away. In January of 2020, John Russell Witt, who was now 57 years old, pleaded guilty to two counts of second degree murder and concealing a death, though admitted that he felt remorse for his crimes. Witt was subsequently sentenced to 26 to 32 years for the murder of Myung and Bobby, and will spend the remainder of his natural life behind bars. Bobby's aunt, Barbara Molman, is quoted as saying, Bobby was a very brilliant little boy, and he was funny. He had a real dry sense of humour. He made you laugh, and he was sweet. He was a sweet, sweet, gentle, kind-hearted little soul. In relation to Myung, Barbara said, She was funny and fun. Literally, I'm going to have to say probably the hardest working person that I've ever known in my life. In regards to her brother's horrific crimes, Molman said, Not in a million years would I have ever imagined that my brother would be capable of doing this disgusting, vile, heinous act. Not in a million years would I have imagined him to be a monster hidden in plain sight. Bobby and Myung's ashes were returned to their loved ones, finally giving the family some closure. Tim Horn, a retired Orange County investigator who worked on Bobby's case for over 20 years, personally delivered the youngster's ashes to his relatives in Mount Oreb, Ohio. A private memorial service was held shortly after for the slain mother and son. They lost two much-loved family members in the most horrific way, and to know that their lives were taken by another family member must have been so unimaginably devastating. Despite the fact that justice was served, the pain of losing Bobby and Myung is still very much felt in their family circle. Two lives were cruelly snatched away in the most unimaginable of circumstances. May both Myung and Bobby rest in peace.